we have these exchanges that have popped up almost overnight, completely deregulated because they operate outside of all the financial laws around the world because, you know, the governments just didn't, they didn't realize Bitcoin was there for, you know, most of its life so far. And, um, you know, a lot of people have gotten rich off of it. And aside from Mt. Gox, you know, not, not that many people have been hurt unless it's from their own, you know, stupidity. Well, I will say, back in the day, um, it wasn't Mt. Gox specifically, but uh, Bitflora.com. I was storing a certain amount of bit Bitcoins on Bitflora.com. And, uh, but this is back when there was only like one wallet around and I didn't feel like running it all the time on my, on my laptop and bitfloor.com disappeared without warning. Uh, check back a week later, uh, websites down and everything can't log into my, or I could log into my account, but it wouldn't let me withdraw my bitcoins. I saw them in the balance right there, uh, but, uh, couldn't, couldn't withdraw. And, um, so, you know, this, that's the type of screw ups that, you know, New York's trying to prevent, but. They, it's it's a power play, really. They can't actually yeah. prevent stuff like this. They just well, want yeah, power they, over people. You know, they can't. It doesn't matter how hard they regulate the the businesses. They're not going to be able to keep an exchange from failing if it's not profitable, yeah. unless they bail it out. Which you know, let's pray they don't do that. Yeah, with but, what money? You ain't got yeah. bitcoins to bail them out, and you know, yeah. what are you going to do? Dig deeper into the national debt? <laughs> but you know, like you said, the exchange is just like went under overnight without warning and you lost like you lost access to your bitcoins but like i said user error you know don't don't store your bitcoins on an exchange wallet because you don't really have ownership over those coins yeah and so yeah should have so, stored you know, it on on bitcoin qt it would have been the smart way like now um, we have so many wallets that so there's so many options no one has any excuse for losing bitcoins on a website that goes under no one has any excuse yeah and um you know, so, so again, like the only, there's been two major Bitcoin thefts um, that I know of at least in the history of Bitcoin. One was Mt. Gox failure. Two was when the FBI stole the Bitcoins from everybody on Silk Road. Um, one of those uh, was the result of a free and unregulated market because Bitcoin is, exchange was a new thing. Um, you know, these people, the people who are in charge of it, um, Mark Karpelas especially, didn't really have a ton of experience in, in you know, high stakes financial industry. And uh, and everybody learned from that after yeah, Mount Gox They were the crashed. first one. And, and the second major one came from the government who's supposed to be protecting us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Demise of Silk Road was completely, I mean, obviously, completely the fault of the government. They did it. Yeah. And now, and now, um, Ross Ulbricht, he's or not, not him directly, but his defense team is saying that uh, the FBI didn't have a proper search warrant when they did that. So yes. you know, not not only is this giant agency that's supposed to be protecting our liberties, not only are they infringing our freedom of choice, but they're doing it illegally by violating the Fourth Amendment. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I, I don't think Americans should uh, place too much faith in the Bill of Rights anymore. Yeah, that's, because, that's long gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're taught to, to worship that, that little document, you know, in seventh grade. But, uh, you know, we fo follow the news and you'll see examples every so often, or very often actually, where the government violates the Bill of Rights on a, on a regular basis, mm -hmm. whether it's the Fourth Amendment or First Amendment. Second Amendment, uh, Tenth Amendment states, right? I mean, you go down the list, and it always happens. It doesn't matter. No one yeah, is I held just, accountable. I just think it's um, pretty ironic how there's people in the Bitcoin community, and, you know, it's understandable because it's, it's expanded far beyond you know, this little libertarian bubble. Right. But yeah, um, huge, it, it amazes me how, like, just people in general um, have this belief, or, or they, have this, um, they have this trust in a government that um, that they'll protect us, even though historically they've you know never done so really, and um, yeah, it's and kind of like even, a religion almost. They have faith. Yeah. In it. What's even more comical is that there's people who are supporting the New York State government, which is far more tyrannical than the federal government oh, has yeah. <laughs> ever been. Yeah. 
Well, anyone who's supporting the New York regulations is, I mean, I don't want to paint with too broad a brush, but either you're, you're misinformed about what's actually in the regulations and, and, and how it'll affect the industry, or you stand to make a lot of money off of the regulations and how mm -hmm. it'll constrict uh, businesses from, from forming that might compete with your established business. So, um, you know, it, 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 people should just f support the free market more instead of, you know, relegating their rights, you know, away to some, you know, uh, you know weird authority who, who can't actually get the job done. Yeah, but, you know, to be fair, um, even though I have seen a lot of people in the big community who have wanted government involved in Bitcoin, I haven't seen that many people supporting the bit license mm. regulation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, like you said, the only people I've seen that have supported it are, um, you know, people who don't like really understand um, like basic economics or people who stand to make a lot of money off of it, like the exchanges um, who have come out in support of it. You or know, the payment because, processors, Coinbase and BitPay. They support yeah. the general concept of the bit license. Yeah, and it's because um, they're not really invested in it ideologically uh, as much as they are, you know, financially. So, um, you know, and if they make if they make the government too mad, um, you know, they're going to go out of business. So, of course, it's in their best interest to support this regulation because it's going to keep them around longer. But, um, you know, the individuals who aren't really um, profiting off Bitcoin, uh, unless they work for Bitcoin, but most people just buy it from an exchange. Yeah. You know, I haven't really seen a whole lot of those people um, come out in support of BitLicense. Yeah, I you know, I bet a lot of those people who just deal with Bitcoin, you know, as maybe a side project in life, maybe just like a, a passing interest that they that they like to trade in it occasionally or whatever, or experiment, you know, those are the kind of people who really need an extension in the bit license comment period. Because they aren't paying that much attention. They've got probably like full time jobs that they go to, you that they got families that they take care of. They don't have the time to sit down and read a a 40 page document of proposed regulations for Bitcoin, you know? So that's, that's really why we need an extension in this period for yeah. the whole community to get up to speed on it. 